this isn't really like this at all. Hello, people of the interwebs. To your favorite shop dwelling Sarah here with another truck review. Today I have the 2022 Lexus GX 460, the creme de la creme of overlanding rigs. At least in my opinion, I actually considered purchasing one of these used prior to ordering my new Ford Bronco for an overlanding project. But uh, today we're gonna get up on the lift, nerd out over the tech specs and how this thing is constructed, and then take it off road and see how it does. So let's get this thing up in the air. First things first, out back. Look at this muffler. It's painted satin black. That's weird. It's got a real tip though. Full size spare. Oh, is it the same wheel? Hell yeah, it is. That's what's up. It's got the same wheel for a spare. This one doesn't have the tow package, but you can see a hitch would just bolt right up to here. And if it had it, it would tow 6,500 pounds or that many kilograms. This rear anti-sway bar has something special to it. If you notice, it's got this weird little actuator shock absorber looking thing attached to one side and then uh, like an end link on the other side of it. That's because this is equipped with what Toyota calls KDSS or the Kinetic Dynamic Suspension System, which allows the anti-sway bars to be adjusted on the fly automatically depending on the terrain that you're driving on. So it uses like the yaw sensor, speed sensors, steering angle, all kinds of other parameters to adjust these things to just stiffen or allow more flex in the suspension as it so needs. The struts on this four link are manufactured by Takiko in Japan. The GX460 rides on Toyota's J150 platform, which is the Toyota Land Cruiser Prado everywhere else in the world. It's a traditional body on frame design and I think that makes a great choice for overlanding and off-roading in general because it's simple old school and rugged. This thing's got some pretty rugged skid plates up under here. There's really not much exposed. Even the drive shaft is up above the line where the skid plate and the fuel tank is at. Sango. Toyota. Sango. That's a big muffler. It's like the size of a pillow for a robot. I wasn't expecting to see that. These plastic running boards have an aluminum core and some big steel braces underneath them. The GX460 has a full-time four-wheel drive system with a Torsen center diff and an electronic locker on top of that. It is all paired to only one transmission choice. It's an ISN 706F six-speed sequential shift automatic transmission. Ooh, look at that. It looks like tripas for robots. Have some robot minuto. As far as the front suspension goes, you got a double wishbone configuration with a Takiko coil over strut up front and swing around over here. You can see that massive anti-sway bar part of the KDSS system, this little actuator shock absorber looking thing up there. And yes, I'm going to measure it. Might as well. It is. Holy shit. 41 millimeters. That is the biggest anti-sway bar I've ever measured. Also, look at that. A little air inlet right here in the skid plate in the front. The skid plate goes all the way back here underneath the transmission as well. Whilst I'm at it, come back here again. 29 and change millimeter. It's time for the braking test. No one behind me, ready. This thing's big too. Here it goes, Ooh. woo, that was loud. <laughs> that was, that was all tire screeching. Pretty good, pretty good. Gets the job done. Nose dives hard. That braking was just accomplished with a set of 13.3 inch front rotors and a four pot caliper, which looks mildly familiar to the one found on a Tacoma. May or may not be the same part. Toyota likes to part bend things. My stomach's growling. And around that is a set of 18 by seven and a half 
gloss black wheels for the black line special edition package which this one has and they're wrapped in a 265 60 18 inch bridgestone dueler ht tire well look at this little removable flapper doodle hmm out back you got disc brakes it's a 12.3 inch rotor with a single pot caliper and the wheel and tire square stance to the front they're a positive 25 millimeter offset in case you're wondering wanting to do aftermarket wheels on one of these in the name of science i am now going to give this big beast the beans i'm going to disable traction control so this thing can get a little squirrely dan slap it over into sport mode and see what this thing can do ready go Oop. come on truck go it sounds good it sounds really good there you go, it's not bad. It's not slow, it's adequate. Pop. Hood struts, yay! And they painted underneath the hood. Good job, Lexus. Under the hood of Lexus's GX460 is Toyota's 1URFE. It is an all aluminum, 4.6 liter, four cam V8 with VVTI, variable valve timing intelligent, that produces 301 horsepower at 5,500 RPM and 329 pound-feet of torque at 3,500 RPM. Well, that's an interesting underhood insulation. It's like heather black yellow-ish. Ew, what is on my sleeve? Gross. Ah, oh, I just made it worse. So digging in a little bit deeper on this 1UR FE V8, it's part of a family of three engines from Toyota. And for those of you that are aware of General Motors LS engines in the past, it's kind of a same, same situation that you got going on here with the UR motors. The 1UR is a 4.6 liter with a 94 by 83 millimeter bore and stroke. Then you have the 2UR, which is a five liter. It was found in the RCF, the GSF, some of Lexus's performance vehicles that had that five liter V8. And then there was the 3UR, which was the 5.7 liter found in the prior generation Tundra and Sequoia, stuff like that. Now, the only thing that changed between each one of those engines was you got a longer stroke. I know there's going to be an innuendo comment coming after that one, or maybe there's a golf enthusiast. I'll just hope for that. Let's see, is this engine cover removable? Oh, it is. It's silver too. I like that. A plastic intake platinum up here. I wonder if you could put the 2UR metallic blue platinum from the 5 liter on here. That would be kind of neat if that actually worked. Anyway, this does have dual VVTI on intake and exhaust. It's a 10.2 to 1 compression ratio and it's port injection only. So it's old school. The reason why not a lot of people stuff these things into every project car they possibly can is because it's a large engine. Same thing you got going on with the Ford Coyote engine because it's a four cam V8. Just size wise, it's a massive V8 compared to a pushrod LS. That's why everyone stuffs those into everything that they shouldn't. I mean, could. Go back on your clipper doodles. Here you go. As far as maintenance goes, despite this being a four cam, I mean, there's room on the side over here to access the cylinder heads because of the angle of the V8. So it's not too, too terrible. And if you remove all this plastic stuff in the air box, you can get to the other side as well. So I don't think it's that bad. It could be worse. Sadly though, this drivetrain is probably on its way out soon. I mean, the LX already got the twin turbo V6 from the Tundra. So I'm sure there's gonna be something to replace this glorious V8. Let's see what this big behemoth will do on the hill climb test. You think it would have no problem whatsoever given what it is, but this actually has less ground clearance and approach angle than the Ford Maverick with the FX4 off-road package I recently reviewed. Uh, I'm, should I lock the center diff? I don't think it needs it. I don't think I need four low either. Let's just leave it as is and see what it'll do. Obviously a tire inflation is what it comes out of the box as. I haven't messed with that. Okay. So far this is pretty drama free. I hear the robots doing their jobs. It doesn't care. It's just like, yes, this is a hill. I am designed to climb it. 
and I will climb it in comfort. <laughs> this is, I'm like going really easy on the throttle. It's not struggling. I'm just trying not to kick up any dirt at my GoPro mounted on the back bumper. <laughs> that was <laughs> zero challenge whatsoever. It didn't even need any assistance from the diff lock or four low. Man, those ventilated seats are kind of powerful. My butt is starting to get cold. I'm going to turn that down. Ah, here's a good test. Let's see how it articulates going over this weird ridge. Not using any of its off-road features, just straight out of the box. Yep. It just does it. No problem. Heard a little bit of action from the robotic wheels under the dash. That was about it. <laughs> This thing is such a beast. It doesn't matter what you throw at it. If I had one of these, I would absolutely do the Land Cruiser Prado conversion on it. And I actually found a website that has the parts to do it. It's uh, just under 3000 bucks and it gives you the headlights, everything you need in the front end, the taillights to convert your GX460 to look like the Land Cruiser Prado. And I know a lot of people that live overseas that have those are like, why would you do that? But here in the States, it's because oh my the wind blew my camera over I gotta find something that's gonna challenge this rig I've never tried this hill before I'm gonna use my low range for this one Hit neutral there we go I'm in low range I'll lock my center diff why not oh jeez this is stupid why am I doing this this is so steep. Do I have the approach angle to be able to even do this? Oh my god, I don't like this at all. Oh, why am I doing this? Ooh. Uh, I don't like this at all. <laughs> that was easy. That was easy. That was not hard. I was, it was scary because I've never done that hill before. Didn't challenge it though. Didn't challenge it. If you had different bumpers on this truck, it would literally climb the moon. I don't know if that makes sense. Oh, you gotta be in four low for the DAC to do its thing. We'll use it just to, to do my DAC. There we go. Yeah. DAC. Robotic whales. So it sounds like. So here's my thoughts on the GX460. As far as the multi-terrain select and the crawl control, all those add-ons that you can add on top of this, I don't think it needs it. I really don't. This thing will go anywhere just as is out of the box, just like this. And luxury wise on the interior, it has everything I need feature wise. I don't think you need to add any options to it. The sound system in here sounds amazing. It's got satellite navigation standard in here and it doesn't have a wireless charge pad for your phone, but it's not really a deal breaker. It's got ventilated seats that will freeze your ass off and heated seats and heated steering wheel. I mean, what else really do you need in here? I don't, I don't really need any other features. It has everything I would want. It has the additional row of seating in the back that is, useful i i don't have kids so not really for me but i don't know this i don't really see the point in adding any options to this truck it's great out of the box and it feels like it's built to last a million miles and i'm sure it will there's probably some out there that already have almost a million miles on them fuel economy though the fuel economy is not the greatest it's full-time four-wheel drive with a v8 but i mean you can't have cake and eat it too you can though. You can have cake and eat it too. I don't know why people say that. It's that's fucking dumb. So how did the GX460 rank? Well, first up is the bean score. It's a rating of one to five beans based on the feeling you get behind your gut when you give it the beans. And that truck right there is getting a rating of one bean. It's adequate amount of power. Doesn't feel slow, doesn't feel fast, gets the job done, sounds nice in the process. Next is the cookie score, it's assessment of what you get for what you spend. 
And this truck, as equipped right here, just a hair over $60,000, that black line package, is getting a rating of three cookies. You can easily get in trouble with these things when you start adding options to it, but this one has like almost nothing added other than that black line package. Hello, I am reporting to you live from the wild where I'm going to give you the GX460's meatball score. It's assessment on a one to five scale based on a vehicle's ability to tackle off-road obstacles. And the GX460 is getting a rating of three meatballs. I feel like a weather forecaster reporting from inside Hurricane Stupid right now because it's so windy out here. <laughs> anyway, uh, like I said, just different bumpers, ditch the running boards and this thing would literally go anywhere. It's a beast. Back to you, Studio Sarah. Next is the mechanic score. It's an assessment of how much of an ass pain something would be to work on it on a one to five wrench scale. Five being super easy, one being an abysmal sh show. And this GX460 is getting a rating of 3.1 wrenches. It's a pretty solid old school tank-like build to the truck. It does have some modern tech features which add a small amount of complexity to it, but honestly, I don't think this is that terrible of a vehicle to have to work on or maintain. Lastly though is the Penguin Square. Assessment of how much I personally like a vehicle and the GX460 is getting a rating of 4.1 Penguins. Partially because I just think it looks absolutely sick and black. It's just a good looking color for this truck. And it's a classic off-road design. Full-time four-wheel drive, a V8, and yet it's luxurious. It's a good truck. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this review and I will see you soon with another. Bye.